This Week in AI, Apple in conversations to use Google Gemini and upcoming iPhones, Figure AI's humanoid robot can hear, see, and speak like a human, NVIDIA advances two major steps in the AI race at their GTC conference, Elon Musk open source LLM Brock officially released, and the world's first law on artificial intelligence passed in the EU. Hi, and welcome back to the AI Almanac, which is a once weekly brain dump of the top AI finds or advancements for the week. My name is Veronica Hylak. I am a startup owner and an AI consultant. I join you this week from the beautiful Shenandoah Mountains in Virginia at this most amazing yurt. I don't know if you can see it. It's very isolated, secluded in the mountains, no cell service. It's so funny about technology people we need like total digital detox, like complete cutoff. We crave it because I think we're just in a technology overload all the time. I think I would be completely fine just chopping wood for a living if I wasn't so prone to splinters. The theme for this week is the forbidden bite. In the garden of Silicon is Apple tempted by Google's Gemini. And that's where we'll start today. Advancement number one, Apple in conversations to use Google Gemini in upcoming iPhones. On Monday, Bloomberg reported that Apple was in conversations to license Google's Gemini model to power a range of cloud-based off-device AI features in future iPhones. Apple has also reportedly had similar discussions with OpenAI. Apple's team of AI and ML researchers recently released a research paper of the creation of a series of multimodal models named MM1 by the Apple team. According to the paper, MM1 is capable of understanding and producing various forms of data, including text and data simultaneously, as well as advanced reasoning. However, Apple's ongoing conversations to collaborate with other companies, including Google, strongly indicates that Apple is not as far along in its generative AI efforts as many would have hoped. The terms of the agreement have not been finalized yet and are unlikely to be confirmed until Apple's annual WWDC Worldwide Developer Conference in June. My initial thoughts, Apple has been suspiciously quiet about generative AI over the last year, but Apple's government security level of secrecy is expected at that point. With the launch of their open source LLM Ferret a few months ago, as well as Tim Cook's comments to the board just a few weeks ago that generative AI will come this year, I thought they would have been further along. Well, I understand Apple's predisposition towards Google instead of a Microsoft opening eye package because Microsoft is historical public enemy number one. The only part of Gemini that currently meets Apple's privacy benchmarks is Gemini Nano. It can run locally, and as of Apple's head of AI stated a few years ago, running any other way is technically wrong. But the reports are saying they would power cloud-based AI solutions, so maybe Apple has changed their mind. Overall, this doesn't make sense to me. If this kind of deal goes through, it's a clear indicator Apple missed the mark and maybe going into a different era. Advancement number two, figure AI's humanoid robot can hear, see, and speak like a human. If you need me, I'll be in the mountains. A few weeks ago, I reported that Figure AI announced a partnership with OpenAI. And this week, we saw a glimpse of what that collaboration effort looks like. Hey, Figure One, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. My initial thoughts, I vote that every humanoid robot demo from here on out should be in a messy kitchen with kids running around to see how well it actually handles it. But I think AGI is a lot closer than we might think. And we're currently lucky that Figure AI has not mastered the manufacturing aspect yet to be able to ship thousands of these. We're drawing towards the dystopian future that we've been warned about throughout the 21st century. I simply worry that we're not being responsible and preparing adequately for the rollout of such technologies. I worry we're just gonna wake up one day and they're part of our lives and we're not gonna have the legislation or the protocols in place to protect human rights. Advancement number three, NVIDIA advances significantly in the AI race at their GTC conference. NVIDIA's founder and CEO, Jensen Huang, 
unveiled remarkable breakthroughs at their GTC conference keynote. In addition to expanded partnerships with Mercedes-Benz and launching Omniverse for the Apple Vision Pro, they announced two revolutionary innovations that significantly advanced the field of artificial intelligence. NVIDIA introduced Project Groot, a foundational model for humanoid robots. In an incredible live demo, Huang explained that robots powered by Groot, an acronym for Generalist Robot 00 Technology, are engineered to mimic and learn movements by watching humans and can comprehend natural language. Well, I think we have some special guests. Do we? Hey guys. So I understand you guys are powered by Jetson. They learn to walk in Isaac Sim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is orange, and this is the famous green. They are the BDX robots of Disney. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you a snack in a moment. Let me finish up real quick. These robots are driven by the innovative Jetson Thor robotic chips. Next, NVIDIA unveiled the Blackwell processor chip and platform, currently the world's most powerful chip that will lead to a new era of computing. Blackwell surpasses its forerunner, Hopper, which currently powers the majority of LLMs right now. It operates a Gen AI LLM with a trillion parameters at 25% lower cost and energy consumption. It accelerates AI training by 2.5 times, increases the speed of inference, which is the ability of AI models to make deductions from new data by five times as well. NVIDIA also developed an infrastructure that enables the interconnection of multiple GPUs, similar to Lego blocks, empowering companies to merge several distinct GPUs into a singular expansive GPU that they're calling a super chip. Major corporations such as Google, Meta, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Tesla are eager to integrate the Blackwell technology promptly. NVIDIA currently dominates this sector, holding a 90% market share in the chips designed for use in LLMs. My initial thoughts, to me, this was the biggest advancement this week, even if it didn't win the headline of the article. To train and launch AI models at the scale we need in order to get the results we want, we need a lot more GPU than what we had. As for Project Root, I was completely stunned when I watched the live demo. The way that they were reacting to voice commands and their movements truly felt like it was out of a movie. They even introduced two robots that moved similar to Disney robots like Wally. -E. I can honestly say I never felt that way about any other humanoid demo up until that point. Lastly, a big part of this keynote is that it's clear NVIDIA is no longer just a chip making company, it's also transitioning into software. In the long term, six to eight years from now, this shift could likely be a large part of their business structure and possibly larger than the chip making side. Advancement number four, Elon Musk's open source LLM Grok officially released. Grok 1 has officially become available on GitHub under the Apache 2 license, meaning anyone is free to modify or redistribute. Being an incredibly massive model at 314 billion parameters, Grok 1 is the largest open source model currently available now on the market. Grok1 is a MOE mixture of experts model that was trained from scratch by XAI using Rust, Jax, and a custom training stack. And the code of contact in the documentation accompanying Grok's release says only be excellent to each other, an apparent reference to the 1989 sci-fi comedy Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. My initial thoughts, if you're not familiar with what MOE is and what is the difference between that and a standard neural network infrastructure currently leveraged in most LLMs, it basically is a family of smaller neural networks that are connected, but only firing up certain parameters based on the knowledge need as opposed to activating the whole network. It's significantly more efficient and is definitely in the future. Some of Google's models also leverage MOE. I covered it in a little bit more detail in a past blog post. I still do wonder why Musk is doing this. Is he truly dedicated to open source and AI technology? I, I really hope that's it. Last but not least, advancement number five, the world's first law on artificial intelligence passes in the EU. 
The EU's AI Act passed last week, marking a significant milestone in the regulation of artificial intelligence technology worldwide. Set to go into effect in May, it introduces the first legal framework aimed to safeguard fundamental rights, promote transparency, and increase accountability in AI usage. There are also restrictions and bans on practices deemed high risk to fundamental rights, such as untargeted scraping, official images, biometric stealing, and emotional recognition in workplaces and schools. There are some transparency requirements that companies must disclose what AI is being used and label AI-generated content and an obligation for AI companies to document the development process, explain their steps and how they are respecting copyright laws, and summarize the training data used. However, the AI Act has faced significant criticism. Opposers argue that it provided loopholes for government surveillance and excessive use of sensitive biometric data by law enforcement. This critique is encapsulated in the concern that the Act might serve more as a guide for implementing biometric surveillance rather than actually preventing it. Amid this feedback, the UN General Assembly announced it's considering its first resolution on artificial intelligence this week as well. This legislative effort by the EU, coupled with the UN's consideration of resolution for AI, reflects a growing global consensus on the need for regulatory frameworks that can harness the benefits of AI while mitigating the risks. My initial thoughts, the EU's Artificial Intelligence Act leaves me with feelings of skepticism, primarily due to its broad scope and potential loopholes that might not enforce much change, especially in the sensitive area of biometric usage. Personally, as someone who avoids biometric scans at all costs for privacy concerns, I'm pretty crazy about it. The legislation's allowance for biometric data usage by law enforcement opens avenues for increased mass surveillance. It is funny how crazy I am about data privacy. I actually was monitoring my panel on Elevate today and somebody asked about the, the data privacy within one of my startups, MetaLinguist, and I just wanted to laugh and I was like, do you not know me? Probably the one of the most crazy data privacy people in the world is one of the co-founders. Like, your data remains your data. In addition to the biometric concerns, the potential for the industry lobbying to circumvent the stringent requirements raise huge doubts about the effectiveness of the app because if these companies are just going to circumvent all of these requirements and claim that they're trade secrets and not really actually provide anything, then what is really the point? While its goals are commendable, the reality of its implementation most likely will fall short and thus not fully safeguarding citizens' rights and privacy as intended. I hope that I'm wrong, but I will be pleasantly surprised if EU citizens see absolutely any downstream effects of this legislation that is useful. And that's it for this week. I honestly think this might be one of my most favorite AI advancement weeks in a while. There was just so much exciting progress that was made instead of scary. Even if the robots could be a little scary, I think Wally's representation and uh, NVIDIA's demo made it a little bit better. And next week, I have a little surprise for those who really want to understand artificial intelligence a little bit more under the hood. So stay tuned for that announcement and I will see you all next time.